in attendance and via live stream. We're here live at the Everyday Seagull Gymnasium. I am Trace McMillan, a 2016 Pike High School alumni. Joined alongside with me today, I have Alana Foster. Alana, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you expect for this evening. Great to be here, Trace. I am currently a senior here at Pike, and I expect a competitive matchup, and here's some stats for the Red Devils going on tonight. All right, so starting off, we have number three, Devin Woods. He's a guard. Started all 14 games with 100 field goals made. We also have another guard, Damon Howard, number 11. 70% free throws percentages made. Here we have another guard, Avery Douglas, number 30. 89% free throw percentages made. Here you guessed it, another guard, Josh Woods, number 32. Started all 14 games, 60 total rebounds this season. And we have one forward, Joseph Anand, number 34. 81% from the free throw line with 102 total rebounds this season. Wow, that's really good stats. They're really yeah. on point. Uh, I haven't heard of four guards in, uh, no, in a long time. <laughs> I know it's something totally new, so I could expect a lot of uh, new looks from the Red Devils um, who are uh, led by Bill Zick. And uh, so he's on his 13th season here, and he's accumulated uh, over 200 victories over a number of sectional championships. I can name five off the top of my head, yeah. along with uh, regional championships and also a semi-state championship. So Pike's program is in uh, pretty good hands, to say the least. In good standing. Absolutely. We take a look at Carmel Clay. It's led by uh, Ryan Osborne. And uh, as we, as, we uh, as the game progresses, we'll dive into some of their key players to look out for. Yep, just moments from tip off. And also, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our friends and our, our, our friends at uh, Corteva AgriScience for supporting Pike's success. And Corteva regularly invests their time, expertise, and capital to a variety of initiatives and activities that positively impact our schools. Here's Josh Woods, number 32. Damon Howard, number uh, 11. He's a sophomore who's six feet tall. Pretty tall young man. And that's Devin Woods. He's a guard, five foot 11. Looks like the teams are getting ready, ready getting into a huddle. <laughs> yeah, looks like we got a, a war huddle going on over here. Pike's getting hyped up. Carmel, they're out here ready. Carmel Clay, they have some uh, some pretty uh, impressive, impressive things to uh, look out for. So some things that are noted is number 14 at Carmel, Sam Moore. This guy's a, a forward who stands at six foot eight inches tall with an offer from Belmont University. Yeah. We also have a post player, number 40, Jarrett Bonds. He's also a forward who stands at six foot five. It's a lot of forward. Seems like it's gonna be one of those forward versus guard games. And here we are, tip off. Carmel Clay gets the ball. All right, number 40 passes it off to number four. Yep, number 40, that's Jarrett Bonds. Number four, it's Ryan uh, Clevenger. He goes up for the basket, comes short. We have Damon Howard taking it down the court. With the Red Devils, absolutely. I believe that's Josh Woods with the ball. Pass to the back. Out to Devin Woods. I wonder what they can make of this. Karma has good inside defense. But Pike also has to be able to be in and outside the paint as well at all times. At all times. I agree with that. This is Devin Woods. Looks like he's having a hard time getting, getting to the hole. So he pitches it out to, uh, to Joseph. Oh. oh, man. That's not a good start right there. Was that a shot clock violation? <laughs> Looks like. Oh, travel. I'm sorry. Travel violation. All right. Taking it back down the court. Number four has the ball again. Yep. Ryan Clevenger. Spencer White has the ball for Carmel. Goes for two, comes up short. Looks like there was a little scramble for the ball. Fell out, yep. Out of bounds. It looks like it's uh, the Greyhound basketball. Taking it out for the Greyhounds, we have Spencer White. 
Here's the ball. Pitches it to, to Bonds, who, oh, there we go. First point of the game. Yep, Sam Orm, that's the guy we were just talking about, six foot eight. Dangerous forward. He gets their first, first points for the Greyhound. We have Pike trying to set up some plays, it looks like. I feel like a, a nice uh, pick and roll could do them some justice. Okay, such a strong possession for the Red Devils. Uh, Damon Howard, he tried hard. He just couldn't, couldn't make his shot go flush. Sam Orm shoots a three. He comes up short. He's going back down court again. Green bout it. Ooh, Devin nice. Makes the, makes the first shot for Pike of the night. Nice. And uh, that's Devin Woods right there. He's been working pretty hard. He gets the pi first points for Pike High School. Now we're all tied up at two. Five, uh, 35 to go. Ryan Clevenger has the ball for Carmel. Goes for two, comes up short again. Joseph Anon with the rebound. Devin Woods looks like uh, he's the main point guard here. He has the ball. He's been trying to, really, there it is for three. Woods for three, comes up short. Rebounded by Spencer White of Carmel Clay. Spencer White, White passes the ball. There it is. Alex Cotto for three, Carmel Clay. <laughs> He's one for one at the three-point line this early. That was a nice shot. Looks like Pike's trying to set up some screens as well. Oh man, it looks like they trapped uh, Avery Douglas, who's a senior guard. He stands at six foot two. Good thing the Red Devils still have the ball as they dish it back out to Devin Woods. He goes in and passes it back to Josh Woods. Back to Devin. Devin's trying to. Ooh. He does a little ball handling, but loses it in the process. Carmel Clay has the slight advantage here. Alex Cotto has the ball. He just uh, nailed a three-pointer. Now Spencer White with the ball. He passes it to Sam Orm. Spencer White for three, comes up short for Carmel. Looks like the Red Devils are doing good on their defense. Damon Howard now has the ball. Got a failed attempt right there for the Red Devils, Joseph uh, Kanan. Looks like Carmel's taking the ball back in. Absolutely, that's Sam Orm right there, six foot, six foot eight. Sam Orm with the ball, six foot eight senior, drives in for two, comes up short, it's blocked by it looks like well it was rebounded by Josh Woods. And now Devin Woods goes in and draws the foul. Looks like it's Carmel's ball again. Oh no, looks like they said that Devin Woods uh, had his first personal foul on that one, so now it's a, it's a charge. It was a charge, so now Carmel Clay has possession. It's being uh, carried by senior Sam Orr. 
This guy is definitely one of their uh, key players right here because the ball is staying in his hands. He passes it off to his teammate, uh, Spencer White, who goes for two and comes up slightly short. Pikes Devin Wood shoots for two. He nails it. Five to four. Carmel Clay has the ball. It's being taken down by uh, Ryan Clevenger. Pike's doing a good job keeping the ball outside of the paint. And that's Jared Bonds. That's the other guy you mentioned earlier today. Jared Bonds, he's six foot five. He's a senior, he's a forward. And he pushed that ball forward, get, nails it two to advance their lead back up to three. And he's uh, just coming off the bench. He's been out for a while. He has. So this is his warm welcome back so far. Devin Howard swings it to, uh, or Damon Howard, I'm sorry, swings it to uh, Devin Woods who goes for two, comes up short. Rebounded by the six foot eight tall Sam Orm of Carmel Clay High School. Jared Bonds has the ball. He goes for two. There's another two for Jared Bonds. He's two for two on the night. Fielding the ball is uh, Ryan Clevenger of Carmel Clay. He is their guard. Being guarded by Devin Woods. I believe that was a Pike, Pike basketball, Pike basketball. Ryan Clevenger is sitting out and they Devin Woods, we, well, he rushes that one. Gets it to corner shot. It's like a buzzer beater. What a beautiful shot by Corey Spates. This guy's a junior, five foot 11 guard. Hits a buzzer beater for the Red Devils, nine seven for the Pike Red Devils. Going into timeout, the Pike, the Pike Township Educational Foundation exists solely to enhance the education of Pike students through scholarships and grants for educator-driven projects. Since its founding in 1993, the Pike Township Educational Foundation has awarded nearly half a million dollars in scholarships and over $650,000 in grants. To learn more, please visit www.pike-ef.org. Special thanks to our Pike Proud partners at the uh, Ortho Indy Foundation YMCA for supporting our Pike staff so they can uh, support our Pike students and families. In addition to offering all MSD of Pike Township families, our staff, I'm sorry, a 15% discount to YMCA members. This year, the YMCA offered teachers and staff of the year a free three to six month membership and provided our district teacher of the year a complimentary one year membership. Thanks to the YMCA for their ongoing efforts to help prioritize the health and well-being of our students and staff. That wraps up quarter one. Doesn't look like we have any guys coming off the bench for the Red Devils. We're going to keep it how we have it. Actually, we have number 12 coming in, who is Coriel Space. He's a junior guard and stands at 5'11". It looks like he's kind of like <laughs> staying in after that buzzer beater right there. They want to keep him in as long as possible, by the way. He's just nailed that, that buzzer beater. Going into the second half, we have Pike with a score of 7 and Carmel with a score of 9. Absolutely. Pike swinging that ball around this half. We have the three no for the Red Devils. And that is nailed by 
Spates. Corey Spates. That guy is hot. He has six points already. Really doing the, the Red Devils some justice. And that was for the lead. 10-9 for the Red Devils. Horn goes up for two, comes up short, tries to force it in. Man, pretty physical basketball there. It sure is. I'm surprised it wasn't a foul, but it, it looked pretty clean, so. It was pushed out of bounds by Carmel. Josh Woods feels it out to Devin Woods. Who passes it to Spates? Oh, that was such a beautiful play right there. And that's uh, that, that's Keith Ingram, six foot six forward senior from Pike High School. Does a beautiful layup. Driving straight downtown for the Red Devils being fielded now. Carmel Clay. They pass it to Orm, who's in the paint right now. Oh, what a beautiful play as he lobs it to uh, Spencer White from Carmel. Spencer White's been pretty active this game. He's a senior, six foot four. Yep. Failed attempt here for the Red Devils. Taking out Ryan Clevenger. That's a foul on the Red Devils. That's number 44, Keith Ingram. That will be his first personal foul of the night. It's getting a little physical out there. It is. It's starting to heat up. Something that we do know is uh, Carmel Clay, the average 50.4 points per game. So right now they have 11. And uh, right now they're... Uh, they have 15 head-to-head -head victories going into this matchup this evening. They're a very patient team, and we also know they have a very strong program history as well. So the Red Devils have to play very well as a team to make up for this. What a great steal by the Red Devils. Led by points scored by Corey Spates. This guy is hot. He drills it in. Red Devils are up. By four points, the score is 15 to 11 with 5.39 left in the second quarter. Thank you. And that's Spencer White for Carmel Clay, who just nails it in to slim down that margin. Red Devils, Damon Howard has the ball. Kind of looks like he flopped a little bit there, which is a turnover for Carmel Clay, who wings it out to Orm. Let's Hatley loses the ball. Looks like Avery Douglas is coming back in the game. Avery Douglas. Looks like he, he made a, accidentally made a foul on that play. Sam Orm gives Red Devils the ball. And Josh Woods uh, fields it out to uh, Devin Woods. We have Keith Ingram setting several screens. That was another attempt for Spades going for his, I believe his third three. That's his first missed one of the evening. Spencer White with the ball. Swings it out, okay. Sam Orm swinging out. A lot of swinging going on with uh, Carmel Clay. They're a very fast paced team. Very fast paced. According to Coach Zick, uh, they, they were expected to be a, little, a slightly more patient, but now they're picking up the pace. They're playing a lot more aggressive than before. 13-15 for the Red Devils. Uh, 
Pikes Devin Woods goes for two. And uh, it's not successful there. Ryan Clevenger with the ball. He passes it to us uh, to Spencer White. Passes it to Sam Orm. We have Spencer White with the flush three-pointer to give Carmel the lead here. 16 to 15. Looks like a lot of back-to-back -back action right here. I think that that momentum, that momentum is a is a bad boy. That's what Carmel Clay's operating with right now to give them that one-point advantage. 16-15 for Carmel. Time remaining is uh Three, three minutes and 25 seconds here at Pike High School. And Justice Manon is seen coming back in. Building the ball for Carmel is uh, Ryan Clevenger. But he dribbles quite well with both his hands, his left and his right hand, so I can tell he does some type of uh, workouts regularly. And man, Spencer White's driving that ball in. He's going for it. Comes up short. He gets fouled in the paint. Spencer White's now at the free throw line. He's one for one. And if he makes this one here, that'll give Carmel a three point advantage, making the score 18 to 15. He misses, so they're up two, 17 to 15. That was rebounded by Pike High School's Avery Douglas. Now with Joseph the ball is, is Joseph Anand, who has a failed attempt at a two-point basket. Carmel now has the ball. Sam Orm drives it to the hole. Can't seem to get through that tough, gritty spot there that, that the Red Devils have created in the yeah. paint because they know that they're up against a giant to say the least. That's what Coach White was talking, Coach Zick was talking about earlier, how they have to have a strong defense. And we're starting to see it there for sure. Red Devils looks like they definitely plan to contain a, to contain a, a tall player. Just like Carmel, they're doing a lot of swinging with the ball. A lot of ball movement this game. Absolutely. Ooh, a nice attempt by Devin Woods who nails it. He does. With the fadeaway. He gives to tie the game up with a minute and 58 seconds left. 17-17. Vincent, this is a nice competitive matchup as you stated earlier. It's, it's going to be a close call. Mm -hmm. It's like it's going to come down to the wire at this rate. Okay, Spencer White drives it in. Failed attempt, but he's, I believe he's fouled on the inside. Again. So he returns back to the free throw line. And Carmel's able to draw those fouls with uh, the Red Devils closing up that gap. Because it looks like Orm, he can't, Sam Orm of Carmel, it's like he can't draw those fouls. I think that Spencer White's playing aggressive enough to force the action, and he's good on that free throw. Yeah. So far, I believe he's three for four at the free throw line. And a bucket here will give them a two-point advantage, and he's good. That's Spencer White, two free throws successfully uh, made, which gives Carmel Clay a two-point lead, 19 to 17, a minute 39 remaining. Now with the ball is Devin Woods of Pike High School. Pike High School had the swinging around method, which goes back to um, Joseph Anand. With uh, another failed attempt, and he just hasn't seemed to really gather his rhythm yet. Yeah. He's, I see him, he's, he's moving around well and he's creating opportunity, but he just can't seem to click yet. Yes. So hopefully the Red Devils can see more success with him here to come in the near future. 
Right now, Sam Orm has the ball for Karma, drives it up, nails it. Gives Karma Clay a four point lead. That's Sam Orm. And that guy is six foot eight, senior, as stated before. And that's how you use your size to your advantage. You do. Red Devils now have the ball with uh, Corey Spates. Oh. And then he passes it to Devin Woods, who uh, goes in for a layup. The and Devin Woods will now uh, go to the free throw line and try to get his get those points that he tried so hard to earn. First time of the night. Yeah, first time of the night we've seen uh, the Red Devils. That's Devin Woods. He's successful on his first attempt. And this kid has, as you told me earlier, as you stated earlier, I should say, this guy has 100 made field goals this season. This guy's a beast. He's in the triple digits. And he's two for two at the free throw line, so that's good to add to his stats as well. Oh, wow, what a what a wonderful save. But the Red Devils, ah, couldn't make nothing of an attempt by Damon Howard. Comes short. And he steals it. Damon Howard, this guy is on fire. He's going for it all. Such a beautiful sense of urgency there. Gets a steal, messes up, gets a steal, gets it back. And now Red with the Devin's ball, Devin Woods taking it to the hole. Get set up for a play. Yeah, short time here, man. We have 18 seconds for the Red Devils. So like they're just going to drain the clock out here and go for the draw going into half. Yeah, looks like nobody's really coming out to try to set anything up right now. Oh. Stumbles a little bit, but stumbled. picks it back up. I don't know. I don't. Here we go. Swings it to Avery. There's that attempt for Avery. Oh. And here we end the second period. Joseph Anand with that attempt came up short. We enter halftime with the score 21 for Carmel, for Carmel, the Carmel Greyhounds, and then uh, 19 points for the Pike High School Red Devils. 21-19, Carmel on top. We are now entering half, and we like to take this minute just to just to uh, let the people know, let the fans know uh, that this is a student-ran production. Yeah, it is. So all things that you see are ran by cameras or camera operators who are people who are still in school, high school people who will have a love and passion for media. And you happen to be one of those people. I do. Tell us about the perspective of uh, being able to participate in the live production. Um, I've been in radio and TV since I was in my sophomore year. I know a lot of the students in our class have been in it since sophomore year. You start off as a beginner, then once you've taken that course, then you move on to the advanced course. It's a pretty stimulating class. You really have to work hard, and we put a lot of effort into our editing skills. And, of course, you know, Mr. Trace right here, he's been doing a good job. He's been filling in for Tammy McCall. She's our head teacher who's been out for a little bit. But, yeah, it's a student, all student-ran production right now. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing to be it's part of and also to experience. And uh, what are some things that gravitated you towards uh, wanting to pursue the media, media careers? Um, I would say it was my passion. I wanted to help people. I wanted to show people stories and give a little perspective on what it's like in everyday life. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you have any uh, written goals that you uh, are looking to fulfill? And uh, if so, how has Pike's program helped you uh, cultivate your goals into reality? Um, my goals are probably just to um, be a more well-rounded editor, um, broadcaster, journalist, and Pike has really helped me pursue my goals as far as um, they've taken me to the next level. I've had um, very premier very premier systems like Adobe Premiere Pro. We work with very professional tools. So I feel like that's going to really help me in the real world. Absolutely. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. And that's something I wish I would have took advantage of back when I was yeah. in high school. But I wasn't, uh, what's the new term for the day? Uh, woke <laughs> towards these type of opportunities. But it's so it's so it's such a beautiful thing to just be a part of a witness with so many students who are happy and excited to be here. Speaking of young people, we have the Pike Basketball Youth League out here on the court right now being introduced. We have Dave Paddock out there as our Pike High School Athletic Director, one of the co-athletic directors, I should say, alongside this uh, Kendra champion, uh, McAloon. McAloon. Gotcha.
All right, and now we're going to take a short break. Coming back to you um, in seven minutes and 20 seconds. Our next team is the second board, coached by Austin Lee and coach Mike Marshall. The second board. Now let's welcome the fifth and sixth rank of engine. First, for the Aces, coached by Brendan Cannon Sr. Hello, my name is Tori Patterson and I'm one of the Pike Township Educational Foundation's board members. The Pike Township Educational Foundation, PTEF, a not-for-profit 501c3 organization, was formed in 1993 to enhance the education of Pike students through scholarships and grants for teacher-driven projects. Although separate from the school district, the foundation's sole purpose is to augment public education in Pike Township. We do this by collaborating with strategic partners to provide grants, scholarships, and staff recognition to our Pike educational family. Here are just a few ways this happens and how you can help. When PTEF awarded its first Hallmark of Excellence scholarship, honoring a Pike High School senior demonstrating talents in the classroom and the community, it launched an annual program that now provides over two dozen scholarship options. And every year, PTEF is approached by donors wanting to create even more of them. What's more, the foundation gives $3,000 in awards to students graduating from the Pike Prep Academy, as well as several honorarium and memorial scholarships. All in all, the foundation now awards more than $58,000 annually, which amounts to nearly half a million dollars awarded since 1993. Each spring, the Pike Township Educational Foundation offers thousands of dollars in grants to educators and others in Pike Township to finance innovative ideas for helping children learn. Grants can affect a single classroom, a school, multiple schools, or the entire district. Since 1993, PTEF has distributed over $650,000 in grants thanks to its generous donors. Over the years, PTEF has funded such things as books for classroom libraries to represent more diversity in the book selections, STEM projects, and sensory room upgrades. We host two major events during the school year, Treasures for Education and the Four Education Golf Outing. These events are primary ways we raise money as well as monthly private donors, regular scholarship donors, and corporate donors. We'd love to have your support, whether it be financial, volunteering on a committee, or at an event, or even joining our board. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, or go to www.pike-ef.org to see all the ways you can support PTEF and read more about our scholarship and grant recipients. You can also send an email to executive director at pike-ef.org. Hello, my name is Tori Patterson and I'm one of the Pike Township Educational Foundation.
Greetings, fans. We're back live in attendance uh, via live stream. We're here at the Edward A. Seagull Gymnasium. As before, I'm Trace McMillan, a 2016 Pike High School alumni. Joined alongside with me is Miss Alana Foster, current senior here at Pike. And we're ready to start this second half. Sam Warren with the ball for Carmel. As usual, he dishes it out to uh, uh, Ryan Clevenger. Here we go with the swinging again. <laughs> Gonna be very fast paced again. Looks like this second half. Ooh, there we go. Wow. That was a lot of aggression right there. A little over aggression. It cost the, it cost the Red Devils two points. Looks like Josh Woods, that was a an and one. Josh Woods got a little physical and he tried to tip the ball out for Carmel and the ball went into their, their net. So they counted towards them and it was a foul. It's a little overly aggression that came kind of costly, right? Sam Orr at the lines, one for one right now. Gets his and one. There's the foul he was looking for all day. Red Devils getting back with the fast pace again. Damon Howard with the ball. Gives it back to Devin Woods. Looks like they're slowing down just a tad bit. Yeah, they're slowing down. Looks like they're, they're somewhat confused. Oh. Passes it to Joseph Anon, who goes up. And is successful. Is that his first bucket of the game? I believe so. <laughs> yeah, he's been kind of quiet lately. Finally, that momentum we were talking about starting to finally build up. Those opportunities, he's been looking for them, and he finally got one. Mm -hmm. Indeed he has. Now with the ball of Carmel Clay. Oh, that was quick. That was but Sam Orr. Short. Fighting for that ball right there. On the ball. And Sam Orr taking it back in once again. This is actually pretty unusual for a post player because normally you see guards taking the ball out. Absolutely. Ryan Clevenger hit nails two for Carmel. And it's kind of starting to get that feeling that the game's starting to kind of spread out a little bit in favor of Carmel. Just a tad. Looks like Pike's slowing down just a tad bit. Looks like they are. Hopefully they don't, they don't uh, think they're the inferior team here because it's still any man's game. With that said, Devin Woods nails a two-pointer. Now the Red Devils only trail threes, 26 to 23, 6, uh, 25 left. Fun question for you, um, is do you think Carmel Clay will meet their average at 50 points per game? Um, the way it's going and Pike's good defense that they're putting up, I'm not really sure if they can double the points right now to get it almost to 50. <laughs> All things are possible, but I'm, I'm thinking that same thing. But it is, it is, it can't happen. Fighting for the ball again right there. Sam Orr, oh my goodness, that's like four attempts right there. He finally nails it in for two for Carmel Clay, Sam Orr. He didn't even look like he didn't even have to jump for that. He just had to reach up. <laughs> he, didn't have he made a long his mark. He did not at all. Looks like they're setting up some more plays. Red Devils down five, 28-23. Five minutes, 40 seconds. And Avery Douglas is going to be passing it off. who swings it to Damon Howard, who swings it back to Devin Woods. A lot of ball handling going on, and he goes up, falls just a tad bit short. It's Devin Woods right there, came a little short. He's trying, though. He's trying. Seems like he's not getting much help from his teammates. Yep, Clevenger of Carmel back with the ball. Takes it up. Successful. 
30 points, and there's your first time. There's our first time out. It's like of the, of the day, and it's coming from the Red Devils. And uh, with that, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our friends at uh, Corteva AgriScience for supporting Pike's success. Corteva regularly invests their time, expertise, and capital to a variety of initiatives and activities that positively impact our schools. The Pike Township Educational Foundation exists solely to enhance the education of Pike students through scholarships and grants for educator-driven projects. Since its founding in 1993, the Pike Township Educational Foundation has awarded nearly half a million dollars in scholarships and over $650,000 in grants. To learn more, please visit www.pike-ef.org. Absolutely, and Carmel Clay's head coach, Ryan Osborne, looks like he's telling his boys how to get it in. There we have Coach Zick trying to get Pike's momentum back. Maybe it's just me, but they look kind of discouraged over there. I don't know if, I don't know if they, do they feel like, yeah, I don't know. We have looks this, like the team's win. trying to come together. They're trying to come back together and regroup while Carmel, they have the whole clipboard out circling X's and O's. <laughs> Got that playbook together. They do. Looks like everybody came prepared for this match. Seven point stretch in favor of Carmel. It's 30 to 23. Five minutes, 11 seconds left. The Red Devils are on the court. Looks like they're ready. Here comes Carmel Clay. To start things off, the Red Devils will have the ball, which is uh, going to be ditched, dished out by uh, Damon Howard. Gives it to Woods. Who gives it to Woods? <laughs> Pretty unique to have two Woods on the same court. And both of them being guards? That's even more unique. There's a whole lot of Woods out here. Every Douglas passes it to Josh Woods. He swings it back out the paint. Looks like Joseph has opportunities ready, and he's ready for the ball. I think a difference maker, if Pike could just get a little bit more motion going. But they also have Sam that six foot eight. Devin goes up for a three, falls just a tad bit short, and Sam's going to take the ball back out. Sam Orm, he's hard to contain. He goes for another one. I think he draws a foul. <laughs> Sam Orm will return to the free throw line for two. Man. Last time he was one for one. Let's see if he can do it again. He's Greyhound. <laughs> Quite active team. He's successful. Still score now 31 23 in favor of Carmel Graham. Looks like it's a bit of a dispute going on right here. Yeah, Carmel's trying to figure out which man they're going to guard post free throw. And he's successful again, 32-23 in favor of Carmel. And the Carmel looks pretty relaxed, like they've discovered their rhythm and established their momentum. The Red Devils have to really persevere and go back to that aggressive strategy that they had. I think that's gave them a lot of early success. I think right now they're starting to slow down. And Damon Howard, I believe he's able to draw a foul, and he'll step to the free throw line. So slim down this margin that was created by Carmel Clay this second half. Came second half ready, pretty prepared to, to take over this game. They did. He falls short. Man. Carmel's ready to come off that rebound. Six foot sophomore, he's a guard, Damon Howard. He's one for one at the free throw line just now. Scores now 32-24 with three minutes and 50 seconds left. Carmel Clay's uh, Ryan Clevenger has the ball, pushing it downfield. Carmel Clay sticking to the aggressive approach. Oh, almost a steal. Clevenger has it. Looks like they're picking their defense back up once again. Sammy for three. And Not Damon successful. Howard takes the ball back really quickly. Looks like they're pushing Pike around just a tad bit. It's like uh, he was able to draw a foul. 
And that's Spates from earlier. Spates will now step to the line to get his two points. He's a junior, stands at five foot 11, another guard. He does it. He nails it, 32-25. He has one more. Two for two, there we go. So Spates adds two to the Red Devils score to make the score now 32 to 26 in favor of still the Greyhounds. For. He has over 102 right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> added more to that. He's pretty, he's a pretty, pretty tall guy. He stands pretty evenly matched with Sam right now. He does. I was just thinking that. The three-point attempt. Uh, Gets the rebound space. back again. Puts it back up there and makes go. that layup. There he is. That's Joseph. Uh, Anon. He gets two. It looks like he discovered his rhythm. He did. I stated earlier. Riddles now it's only a four point game. Looks like they're closing the distance. They're doing a good job with defense. Clevenger has the ball, taking it in. And he does it again. <laughs> Jared Pond. Right under the paint. Substitution has been made uh, for the Greyhounds. Owen Huber coming in. It's his first time playing this game. And o Owen Huber, he's a uh, six foot five, two hundred and two hundred and five pounds forward, who's only a junior in high school. So still, maybe still a lot of growth left. And what an effort by Devin Lewis to get too. That was pretty physical play there. He forces it in. Danella, a, a tough fought layup. Scores now 34 to 30 in favor of Carmel. Carmel's back to their fast paced basketball. Slowing down just a tap. Oh. Pike's ball. Josh Woods coming back in. And a fun fact about Josh Woods, this guy's a dual dual sport athlete. So he also does football. He's uh, spoke about having some offers from uh, Mary University and some couple other schools that spark his interest, Ball State. Oh, wow. So the kid's really a phenomenal athlete all around. And he hasn't really missed many minutes at all this game. I also know he used to do the Pike Youth Basketball League as well when he was uh, younger, in his younger days. So he's been playing a while. He knows both games very well. Oh, excellent. Looks like uh, the Red Devils want to drain the clock here. 24 seconds left. Now with the ball is Devin Woods. I think they're going to try to nail it, nail a, a layup or maybe a three to slim down that margin. Hopefully turn it around at half. Joseph does it. Joseph, uh, Anon. And that's 
That's the, there's the two they were looking for right before halftime. Now we have a two-point game. So the Red Devils get building their momentum back up. It's only a two-point game, it's 34 to 32. Special thanks to our Pike Proud partners at Ortho Indy Foundation YMCA for supporting our Pike staff so they can support our uh, Pike students and families. In addition to uh, offering all MSD Pike Township staff a 15% discount on YMCA memberships, this year the YMCA offered our teachers and staff of the year a free three to six month membership and provided our district uh, teacher of the year complimentary one year membership. Thanks to the YMCA for their ongoing efforts to help prioritize the health and well-being of our students and staff. Quarter starts with uh, with Devin Woods to tie the game for the Red Devils. Came back from that quarter like nothing ever happened. Red Devils with the steal. Steal for the Red Devils led by Devin Woods who goes for it again. He nails it for the lead. There's 36-34 for the Red Devils. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. And that press, that's the same press that they established last year, and it seems to be working here. Rinse and repeat cycle. It's often <laughs> a good thing to, to keep doing if it's successful. Devin Woods with the ball. Looks like he's going to pass it to Joseph. He goes up. Uh -huh. And it's successful. It's successful. 38 34 for the Red Devils. He's really doing his thing with the layups this game as a post player. Oh, yeah. Way to turn the tables for the Red Devils. It's a nice comeback and another steal. Devin Woods for two. Successful. 40 to 34 before in a blink of an eye. And there goes our, our timeout for Carmel. Looks like Pike's really putting the pressure on him. A lot of pressure. A lot of good results. Now they're up six points. Devin Woods came out firing that. That was incredible. Looks like the crowd's, the crowd's getting really hyped tonight. Pike signature song.
back here. Post timeout. Ryan Clevenger with the ball. For the Carver. Ryan for three, comes up short. Rebounded nicely by Jared Bonds. Tiana comes through with another shot. Here we go for Alex, Alex uh, Cowdo. He nails a two for Carmel. He's making a 36-40 game. They just need that reset, get that two. Red Devils have to keep doing what they've been doing just now, which is keep that fire, that urgency. And apply that pressure. Yeah, that he need to in order to keep the lead that they just established. Here goes Devin Woods again. Draws a foul. Oh. Yep, and Devin Woods will take the free throw line. That aggressive strategy is starting to pan out well for the Red Devils. His first uh, free throw is successful. He does it again. He's two for two at the free throw line for that time. Looks like they're doing a little weaving back and forth there. Now Carmel's back to their swinging method. Spencer White with the ball. Just can't break that defense. Cannot, yeah. Five minutes, 30 seconds left. Josh Woods on the defense. Against uh, Bonds. Again, swing it back out. Goes for three three for Carmel. Nails it. That is successful by Alex Cotto. I believe that's his first three of the night. Maybe, but now he's starting to, <laughs> to really open up. I believe that is his first three of the night. Back out to Joseph. Joseph travels. Gives Carmel the ball. Carmel's only down three. It's 39 to 42 in favor of the Red Devils with five minutes and one second remaining in regulation. It's something like little things where if you don't have your fundamentals handled, it could throw away the whole game. I have fundamental basketball. Or with like the ball, the drives it in and is successful. That's two. Red Devils might want to call a timeout here maybe. Slow down that momentum. Now it's a one point game. They were just up six. I think they kind of got relaxed. It's like Devin's trying to create some opportunities here. That's another foul drawn by uh, Devin Woods, so he'll return to the free throw line yet again. This guy's been kind of saving the day. The What's so uh, impressive about the guy is that he has over 100 made field goals. And with this game's help, he's been doing real good. He's living up to the name of shooting guard. That's for one thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, he won't return from the line. It's like they're passing it in. Like they got maybe a technical foul. Looks like the pass is a little bit over, but Devin recovers. Yep, Devin gets it. Yeah, Devin, Devin Woods back with the ball. Four minutes, 20 seconds. Needs a little help. Joseph goes for a three. And he it. Three for the Red Devils, successful by Joseph Anand. That guy's been active now. Second half was his. First half, not so much. Second half, making it when it counts the most. First three. He's showing versatility. There's Devin Woods with that big reach deal again. He's going for it. Carmel swinging it around. Back to their swinging method. Looks like Pike. Yep, and that's nailed in by uh, Ryan Clevenger of Carmel. He gives them a a two-point layup. Scores now 43 to 45 with three minutes and 40 seconds left. Red Devils will then call a timeout.
Pike Township Educational Foundation exists solely to enhance the education of Pike students through scholarships and grants for educator-driven projects. Since its founding in 1993, the Pike Township Educational Foundation has awarded nearly half a million dollars in scholarships and over $650,000 in grants. To learn more, please visit www.pike-ef.org. Like the players are taking the field again. Palmer's still trying to strategize. They know it's coming down to the home stretch, and they have, they need something serious and big in order to uh, come out of here victorious. As you said earlier, Coach uh, Six said that they believe that they'll be victorious tonight. As long as they continue to play how they have been, they've been having great games so far. Right now, I believe they have. 18 wins so far in the season. That's good for the Red Devils. Here we go again. For the attempt, that was Devin Woods. Coming out has the ball. Fielded by Ryan Clevenger. Sends it out to Alex Cottle. Back to Jared Bonds. Post player. Tries to pump fake, doesn't work out for him. Doesn't work out for him again. And there goes that 6'8", Sam. 6'8", Sam Orr. Nails a two, we have a tied up. We're all knotted up here. 45-45, two minutes and 48 seconds left. Who will win it? And just to circle it back, what are your thoughts now on that 50-point average that Carmel has put up so far? They're only five I points away, so look, that double you're talking about yeah. It's coming rather quickly, huh? I think it's going to happen tonight now. It's looks like the crowd's getting very hot about this one. Seems to be a, uh, maybe a, maybe a, maybe with that could have been a foul on the play. And uh, Joseph Anon looks like he'll take the line for his two. It was a personal foul. And he's successful. You think he'll make this next one? I think he will. He's had a pretty good average so far. He's 81% from the free throw line. So this season, yeah. That's with that. over a 50% chance. <laughs> yeah. And he's two for two right there, so his percentage is probably skyrocketing after this game. The kid has over 100 rebounds in total this season. like they're doing more switching again. Right, this is a good matchup right here. 45-47. Two minutes remaining. Carmel has the ball. They give it to Jared Bonds. Bonds fights for the two. And I believe he draws the foul. Go line, first attempt successful. See if he can do it again. He looks composed, he nails it. They're all tied up again, a minute 53 left, 47 47. It's going to come down to who wants it more. Yeah, literally. Seems like both these guys are just evenly matched. It's going to come down to the wire, yeah. It might come down to the last basket, last second, unless somebody just has a breaks. Oh, there we go for the Red Devils, the three-point attempt that does not come well. That was from Spates. Steps out of bounds, going to put it in Carmel's hands. He steps out. He seems to kind of lost his rhythm a little bit just come this cat. fourth quarter. Yeah, he came out firing with threes, 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 and now it's like, man. Yeah, he was essential in the first half. Now. Slowing down just a tad bit. Red Devils might want to consider subbing somebody in. Speaking of that, looks like somebody just came off the bench. Looks like it's a uh, every Douglas about to put him in the game. And as, as stated, they're taking out Spates. 
As anticipated, I figured they would Avery, have to sit him. Sitting down for a while now. Yeah. I think he's hot to get back in. Yeah, Douglas, he hopefully he comes through clutch. Carmel plays out Cotto as the ball now. Looks like they're trying to get the ball. Looks like he's a little indecisive about what he wants to do. Yep. Yep, steps out of bounds, I believe. Timeout, timeout, timeout. Time That's a timeout right there. Lots of pressure, lots of pressure. A lot, a lot of pressure with the only a minute and six seconds left. This We're could still get tied to up. overtime. You never know. Here live at the uh, Pike High School, home of the Red Devils. We have a tied up ball game here with a minute and six seconds left in the fourth quarter. This game cup is going to surely come down to how bad do you want in some good old competitive high school basketball? Stakes are up, and uh, Car Carmel has the basketball, the Greyhounds. They're going to give it to Spencer White, who's going to field it out. And we'll see how this goes. Any man's game. That's right. Alcado has the ball now for Carmel. Looks like he does a spin around in between the legs. He goes up for the layup. It's an and one. It's an and one. <laughs> Speak of momentum. And on the ground there, we have Devin Howard. Damon Howard, I'm sorry. Damon Howard. It's like he had some discouragement from that. And it's an and one for uh, Carmel. And they'll... Hit the free throw line. Looks like he's going to sub. It's Alex Cotto at the free throw line. You can tell by the way he's breathing, he's kind of nervous. Yeah. He still makes it. Still makes it. It's a timeout for the Red Devils. They got a three-point lead right now, Carmel. Carmel with three-point lead. The score is now 50 to 47. We'd like to take this moment to give a special thanks to our Pike Crowd partners at Ortho uh, Indy Foundation, the YMCA, for supporting our Pike staff. So they can support our Pike students and families in addition to offering all MSD of Pike Township staff a 50% discount on YMCA memberships. This year, the YMCA offered our Teachers and Staff of the Year a free three to six month membership and uh, provided our District Teacher of the Year a complimentary one year membership. Thank you to the YMCA for providing their uh, ongoing efforts to help us prioritize the health and well being of our students and staff. And we'd also like to think, so, take this opportunity to thank our friends at Corteva AgriScience for supporting Pike's success. Corteva regularly invests their time, expertise, and capital to a variety of initiatives and activities that positively impact our schools. This is brought to you by Pike's, Pike High School students. Student-ran production, student-led. Uh, every camera that's that's being utilized now 
Even yourself, Alana. Not myself, but yourself. Are all Pike students. Impressive credential there. Speaks a lot on Pike's district. It does. Now we're back here on the on the court. 50 seconds left. Devin Woods has the ball. Pike High School could still win this game if they want to. Woods takes it himself. Nails two. One point game. One point game. Carmel calls timeout. They're really trying to try this game out. Yeah. So this last minute is everything. It's like you said, like maybe a one point game. Very close call. Everybody's getting very intense right now. Sorry, this is the Sam Orm who fields it out to uh, Alex Cotto, who gives it to Ryan Clevenger. Back to Cotto, back to Clevenger, back to Cotto. That swing in starts again. Very fast pace. Another timeout. Another timeout. Not even 15 seconds in. If that. 30 seconds left in the game. Like, like you said, they're really going to try to milk this one out. They are. One, one point, point game. game. Looks like that's assistant coach Baker trying to talk some sense into these guys. You know, really let them know the pressure's in it. Setting up back out for the fight, so it's Carmel. Yeah, man, that band sounds so good. And the high tempo music. That pressure, 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 pressure. We need it now, need it now. The everlasting now. We're here. With the ball now. Spencer White to field it out. Who's the Clevenger? Who struggles? Pikes Devin Woods playing that good defense. 26 seconds. It's like Carmel's just trying to hold on to that ball and stall out the game. So it'll go right back to Spencer White. Looks like he's struggling to find an opening. Looks like it's a bit of a dispute. Yeah, Carl. It looks, it looks like Carmel, they're out, they could be all out of timeouts. I think they're all out of timeouts and they keep calling these timeouts in certain moments. Right now Carmel has a score of 50 and Pike has a score of 49. With only 26 seconds left.
Carmel's ball again. And then three seconds. Out. Orm has the ball. And have to make another. And he falls on the ball. Jump ball. That was a nice little scuffle there. 16 seconds. Oh my goodness. Really coming down to the wire. Talk about protecting the lead. Well, looks no. like Spencer's taking a hit. He looks like he's got a little injury on his eye. Maybe, yeah. It's, it's a pretty physical game. No jump ball, but Spencer will dish it out. Looks like they're scrambling a lot with and, only 11 seconds left. Yeah, Alex Cotto's running around with the ball just to, just to burn out the time. And it's obvious there. And he'll take the line. Cotto will take the line. The Red Devils put uh, Spates back in. They take out uh, Josh Woods. And, uh, and Alex, Alex Kudo would take the uh, free throw line. And he makes it. So now Carmel has a now a two-point lead. Another timeout is called. Another timeout on the court. 11 seconds left here at Pike High School. Back at the free throw line here at Pike High School. Alex uh, Kudo is at the line right now to hit his second free throw to make this a three-point game in favor of Carmel. And he's successful. So about getting the ball back now. 11 seconds. The Red Devils need a three-pointer just to make it to overtime. Or else that's the game. All the pressure's on Devin. Comes up short. Red Devils still have a second. And that's the ball game. Final score, 52 for Carmel and uh, 49 for the Red Devils. Uh, special credits here to the superintendent of Pike High School, is, uh, is Dr. Uh, Larry Young. Uh, the Pike High School principal is Mr. Troy Inman. The athletic directors are Dave Paddock, and Kendra Champion Macaroni. And the chief technology officer is uh, Todd Riker. Tonight's technical manager, uh, has been uh, Kyle Bredahoff. The uh, coordinating producer is uh, Mrs. Uh, Tammy Fly McCall. The director slash producer has been Dan Bordenkecker. The technical director has been Destiny Timms. And on camera we have uh, Dawkins Mercier, Mark, uh, Mark Sotelo uh, Vasquez, Eli Bucket, Elijah Warner, Quentin Brooks. Tonight's final score is 52 for Carmel and 49 for the Pike Red Devils. Tonight's live stream is brought to you by uh, Pike High School students with support of the Pike IT department. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm a Pike alumni, Trace McMillan. And I'm senior Alana Foster. Good night from Pike High School. Be blessed. Have a safe one.